haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. To begin solving this question, what we want to do is draw a free body diagram of the car at the very top of the hill. Now, under typical conditions, when a car is driving over the top of a hill, there would be two forces acting on it. We would have the gravitational force acting downward on the car, and then we would have the surface of the road pushing up on the car, and that we refer to, of course, as the normal force. But in this case, at the top of the hill, the question states that the normal force is actually zero. So this force is going to be eliminated from the free body diagram. And thus, the only force acting on the car is the downward gravitational force. Now, from Newton's second law, we know that the net force acting on an object is equal to ma. Let's assume that the downward direction is positive, just for simplicity. So that way we have a net force of just positive fg, the gravitational force. And we're going to set that equal to mass times acceleration. Now, in this case, because the object is moving in a circle, we can't just use a to represent acceleration. In fact, we want to use a with a subscript of c because this is a centripetal acceleration. Any motion that's along a circular path is a centripetal motion. And so we recall that centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius. So this is the better form that we need. Now, gravitational force we also know is mass times g. And then we'll notice that the mass appears on both sides of the equation, so it can be algebraically eliminated. We're essentially dividing both sides by mass. Next, if we multiply both sides of this equation by r, which is the radius of the circular path, we see that v squared is equal to r times g. This is a result that we're going to hold on to and save for the next phase of the problem. And in that phase of the problem, we're going to be looking at the free body diagram of the car when it is located at the bottom of this valley right here. Now, the gravitational force would still be acting on the car, so we're going to keep that on the free body diagram. And then we will reintroduce the normal force. Now, in this case, that would be the seat of the car pushing upward on the driver, which means that technically this FG is the gravitational force acting on the driver, not the car. So just take note of that. We can go ahead and define, in this case, the upward direction as being the positive direction. And then we'll use Newton's second law again. Notice we are using the centripetal acceleration. Also notice that in this case there are two forces. We have the positive normal force and the negative gravitational force. We've replaced the centripetal acceleration with v squared divided by r. We're trying to solve for the normal force in this question so we can add fg over to the other side. We'll then replace fg with mg. And then we will recall that v squared was determined earlier to be the radius times g. So we can make a substitution right there. And then somewhat conveniently, the radii will cancel, which is good because we didn't actually know the radius. So then we're just left with the sum of mg and mg, which of course is just 2mg. And since we were given the mass of the driver, we can plug that in as well as 9.8 for g. And when we calculate that, we get approximately 1.37 times 10 to the third. And since this is a force that we're computing, the unit will be in newtons. And that is the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.